Doesn't know how to read. Don't say it with music. It could be Irving Berlin. But if you want to woo her and get a lot closer to her, say it with gin. <laughs>1955 Spiller's Guides on how to be a good hostess tells us and we will be following this fine publication to the letter. So good evening Jo. Good evening and thank you very much to Sam there for Say It With Gin for one of my very favourite musicals from 1950s um, High Society by Cole Porter. So yeah we've got to uh, lots and lots of lovely 1950s things for you tonight i see you've got a, a punch there is this a dry do uh never a dry do darling let me put it down and i'll pour you some immediately are well, you ready thank you I are, you ready? are you okay baby go darling thank there you let's you have a little taste of that and then i might take my coat off as well let oh, me see you might do Ooh, have a little taste thank cheers you. darling cheers oh mm, very nice very strong mm, i don't think <laughs> think so i'm not sure it's strong enough but there you go so it's quite strong right then we're settling in for the night now coat we are off. settling in so take your coat off i will be taking my gloves off any moment as well because i'm not sure i can make all these cocktails we've got 12 cocktails for you this evening this is the first of them and this is our york gin roman fruits punch so in here we have got oh what haven't we got what well, haven't we got, got We've definitely got Roman fruits gin in there and lots of it. We're not measuring. We just chucked a load in. Let's just put it that way. I had some socks on earlier and now I don't. Ooh, <laughs> okay. There's pineapple juice. There's orange juice in there. What else have I got in there? I've got some uh, frozen raspberries in there. I've got some soda. I've got some ginger ale. Ginger ale, it's, yeah. It's a good way to start. There's a little a bit of ginger ale by the look of it, though. <laughs> yes, I know. There's quite a lot of Roman fruits in here, which is, and obviously some frozen raspberries, which is why it's a lovely reddy orangey color. Oh, did I say orange juice? I can't remember. Right, well, tonight we've got loads of cocktails for you. What else have we got, Joe? Oh, we've got some live music. I Ooh, am in charge of the live, live music tonight. Music. 
As always, we've got some interesting facts. We've got a few questions, but more drinking than questions yes, tonight. Yes, more drinking. Like, you know, let's get on with some cracking on with some drinking, shall we? Exactly. And of course, don't forget, we are supporting um, St. Leonard's Hospice as always. Please give generously. We are raising a lot of money for them and they are truly thankful. So there yeah, that, thanks for Thanks for digging deep, everyone. That was oh, great. That's right. You can see my hand now. This is going over to my pointy thing. So... <laughs> The first question of the night. I've already mentioned this guide. I've mentioned the Spiller's Guide, 1955. How to be a good hostess. But who or what was or is Spiller's? Oh, look at her in the red dress. I want to be her. She looks fabulous. Oh, I know. What a figure. Gorgeous. Oh, she, knows, she looks a little bit like your mum, Jo. And then that's not, a little treat not, for you later. Not being funny, but actually she does, which as you will see later. She does look a little bit like your mum. So the good news is um, we're going to tell you this answer a little bit later. But the first thing we're going to do is tell you a little bit about cocktail parties. Now, there are two schools of thought here. There's the American version and there's the English version. Which version would you like to do, Jojo? Well, I'm going to go with the correct one, which is this side of the pond. Oh, OK. So you're leaving me with the Americans again. Two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. Well, you, you've been <laughs> over there for the past, past couple of years. You can you can. <laughs> You can give their side of the story. So you're leaving me with, I uh, have to say, I'm quite glad you're leaving me with this lady because she is fabulous. There's a lovely lady called, she's called Clara. Her full name is Mrs. Julius S. Walsh and she is a leader in social activities. <laughs> she's absolutely brilliant. She decided that the very thing to do would be to hold a drinks party for 50 people at midday on a Sunday for one hour which would give people time to go to church in the morning or to go for a drive if they so so wished so anyway she had her own mixologist she had her own bar she was an incredible lady it was a massive hit everybody loved it clara was the toast of the nation and therefore the cocktail party was invented she is the very woman now there is a little aside fact for this she was also quite a strange woman I did my research and actually Clara also liked to hold baby parties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. That's so unwell. <laughs> that is quite unwell. She liked to dress her guests up in baby grows and to make oh, them drink no. their cocktails out of baby bottles. No. Please don't try this at home. We know who you are. I think That's I think the lab racks are on. That looks like one of the things they might do. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so enough of the weird baby stuff. Yeah, enough so of the weird tell us baby about stuff. English. I will not be doing it in my baby grow. Now no. then, now then, the real story of the yeah. cocktail party is, of course, Alec War, who invented the cocktail party. He says it is my belief and my boast that I invented the cocktail party in April 1924. Now, what happened was he had this big mate. Um, he was a war artist actually called Nemson, who was a big party goer and a big party giver. Now, he suggested that there was this dead patch between lunch and dinner where no one was doing much of anything. And why didn't we have a party with not too much food, so there wasn't too much of a faff on for your hostess, mm. but lots of drink? And the, uh, Nevinson thought, hmm, like the sound of that. So they sent out masses of invitations. Mm. And on the night, Alec turns up, huge, great table full of uh, punch, what we, mm. same as we've made tonight. Um, nice. And nobody came. Nobody came. One, one other person came, one journalist oh. came. They all got, they, the four of them got absolutely plastered. No. But uh, the idea was shelled for a year. And then I thought, you know what? I'm not giving up on this. I think the British just aren't quite ready for this time to, to start drinking. Agree. I'm going to disguise it as a tea party. So he invited people for afternoon tea. Hmm. Got them absolutely sozzled. And the next day, it was in all the gossip columns and all the papers because a very, very famous novelist was with him. And she didn't turn up for her dinner date because she was no. too... Dozzled. Ooh, so ooh. there, the cocktail party was formed. Thank you very much, Alec Ward. Yes, Never well, mind her with her teeth pipettes. Yes, well, I'll take all that business. But of course, Clara was first. So I think we should, uh, first of all, talk about a little bit about Prohibition because Prohibition came in the 20s, the, the time you're talking about, Joe. And of course, they used cocktails to sort of hide the fact that this moonshine alcohol they were making was absolutely rank. Well, we've all done that, haven't we? And of course, well, people thought. I was going to say, it's a bit like. Um, in Victorian London, really, isn't it? People are always find a way to make drink taste okay, so they can have always. one. Always, always, always. So let's go back to Clara's party and let's make these are real cocktails that she had at her party. And Jojo, you're up first. Yes, I'm right one. first. Now then, I'm going to make this fantastic little sounding thing called a clover leaf. Mm. So I'm just lifting up my egg and my egg white here. Um, what we have is uh, York 
gin old tom uh-huh. it's 50 mils but i put 100 in because you know you, you, you know how um, we do some grenadine yeah there it is is that the one from ibiza again yes it is it's very mm-hmm. useful my grenadine there um an egg white and nice. uh, some fresh raspberries to garnish so i'm just going to wang this egg white in um it's supposed to be served uh, chilled but not on ice but you know me i'm sorry but all my things have to be on ice because i'm a total pleb so oh, here we go i'm going to give that a whiz up and give it an, oh look at that oh that does look good that Doesn't does it? look good well, it? Fine. cheers Here's have a little go before i start have a look i've taken my gloves off people i can't make cocktails with gloves on oh <laughs> that's absolutely scrumptious oh good yeah, that is really nice. I shall be making that again. Blimey, that is good news. Well, I'm going to make one of Clara's mm. other cocktails, and it's called a Bronx. And I'm going to use York Gin Grey Lady for this, making sure it's the right one. It is indeed. So the reason I'm using Grey Lady, and of course, there is only ever one side of the mixer, everybody. We know that. The pourer, not the mixer. Well, the other side is just the standy up thing, isn't As it? As we know. So what I'm going to put in here, I'm going to put in two shots try that. of Grey Lady. I'm going to put in two shots of what they used to call French vermouth. Now, we just know it as dry vermouth, really, because the French vermouth types as well. So it's the clear vermouth. So I'm going to put two shots of that in. There it goes. Oh, my my mix is quite full already. And I'm going to put two (laughs) shots of what they used to call Italian vermouth. So that's actually the sweet. It's the red vermouth. So that's going in there. Do, 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 there you go. There we go, put that there. Now I'm going to put my little lid on, do my little bit of frying lorry. There we go. Hello to the Lockwoods. I see you're in again tonight. And to Andy Harrison, I've seen it. Oh, you probably can't hear me after all the shaking. Hello, Sandra Lim. Oh, hello. And Philip Barton, I see you're in the house. So I'm going to straight. Jenny, I do love an egg white. You're absolutely right, my darling. You do like an egg white. Yeah. Now, as usual, I'm going to save this for later. So there you go. Philip says I'm not a pleb. Well, Mr. Barton, maybe now and again. But. Well, and then I'm going to garnish that with a little slice of orange, which is Ooh, one I'm going to get you. Get you in a heart shaped garnish box. Oh, you see, I'm awfully flush, flush, flash even. <laughs> so to to me, flush. to me, yeah, I'm a bit, I'm definitely flush. I'm definitely sunburned. Look, um, this is a bit of like a poor man's Negroni, I think. So there we go. So a little taste. Uh, it had quite a lot of stuff in it. I'm not being funny, but it's not, not exactly a poor man's anything, is it? Do you know what? It's completely yeah. different to a Negroni because the Campari in a Negroni um, keeps it a little bit more bitter. This is actually a bit sweeter, this one. I like it. Mm. Cheers. Cheers, mm. my, cheers, my darling. Mine's been, mine's been nicked by a, a secret cocktail snaffler. No, no, no. We don't want any cocktail snafflers. We want a big <laughs> line of them by the end of the evening. Now, of course, we um, no, no York Gin um, night is going to be the same. If we don't mention Great Gatsby, we always mention Great Gatsby. Of course, we are in the 20s. And of course, we're going to mention it. But the question tonight is, in the Great Gatsby, Gatsby was in love with a married lady. But what was her name? Was her name Rose? Was it Iris or was it Daisy? So, and I'm afraid she got away literally with murder. So Yeah, what, what a mix. She was a bit of a mix. But what was her name? And I think you've got another question for us, Joe. I do. Now then, um, going back to the wars. Yes. The, the wars? Was Alex, a- uh, not those kind of wars. Alex, Alex more famous brother was Evelyn War, who wrote Brides and Revisited, of course, which was filmed up the road here at Castle Howard, who also, by the way, happened to sell York Gin. And their farm shop is open at the moment if you want to go and buy some. So hurrah. But yeah, so here we have the gorgeous Anthony Andrews and Jeremy Irons. Oh my, do you know what? I interviewed Jeremy Irons once at the Royal Shakespeare Company in in, uh, Stratford when I was a journalist. Very nice man. Oh, you're so lucky. And and you definitely would, wouldn't you? I think we would. I would. I wish I could say I had, but... (laughs) Have you? Um, No. No, sadly not. (laughs) Well, he's not going to go for me, is he? Right, now then, as you can see, I can remember um, gathering around the telly in 1981, was it? In Nottingham in my student flat and going, oh, oh." But not the boys, it's the bear. What was the name of Anthony Andrews' bear? Was Mm -hmm. it called Winston? Was it called Aloysius or was it called Cuthbertson? What mm. is the name of the bride's head, Ted? Well, I know the answer to this. I absolutely know the answer. But while you're thinking of your answers, I think Joe's got another treat for us. Oh, I do. Now then, we are going to have 
a rosewater ricky now i'm actually i'm actually diving back to your gatsby party because um susanna made a ricky for us last week week before i can't remember they all yeah. blend don't they these weeks yeah. now i've actually got a special something to add into this i sent away for this amazing rose water from lebanon and oh Ooh. my word it is so nice so i'm making a rose water ricky so you need Ooh. your rose water, natch mm -hmm. uh, i need three measures of york gin don't mind if i do yes i'm gonna have uh i'm gonna use london dry very good yeah and uh what, what else do i need i need some rose water i've got my rose water mm -hmm. uh lime juice my fresh lime juice well actually i'm cheating <gasps> out of the fridge because i've only got lemons this week and i haven't got any lime so i'm using Gosh. cheating but it oh. tastes the same yeah well right it tastes the same and there's some brandied cherries mm. that's up and muddled i'm good mm. at muddling uh and some angostura bitters lovely there they are my lovely bitters so that's all gone in gonna give a shake up and i'm gonna mm. add some ice because because i am because for because for because for there we go let's give that a bit of a stir up Mm. Oh my god, that's absolutely lovely. What would what did they do in Gatsby? Gulp it down greedy. In greedy swallows. They gulped mm. in greedy swallows. Mm. Oh, lucky, and lucky. That's, that's quite lethal to be fair, but that's yes, I know this one is particularly lethal. <laughs> you can see I'm making my way down it. The punch not quite so lethal, but there are more lethal cocktails to come. Oh, that, punch is, that punch is punch is not it doesn't have pack a punch let me tell you and we have to say good evening to the man clan i think they're calling themselves the melbourne gin club these days we have to say good evening to the goods we've made another ricky just for you another ricky and and we have to say as always say hello to miss ali good evening miss ali we give you a miss ali time. miss ali harrison no, Miss Ali Kirkham. We've already said hello to oh, Ali. Oh, Ali. Sorry. Ali. Sorry, Ali. Sorry, Ali. Sorry, I you said in. Danny. Yeah. No. Hi, okay. Hi, Ali. Let's quickly give the answer to those two because there's only two little right. questions there. So yes. let's quickly give the answer. Now, going back to my lovely, 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 lovely Great Gatsby question. Of course, it's Daisy. Naughty mm -hmm. Minx Daisy, we like to call her here because she, she was is. a entire minx and you've got your ricky so we're all, so, we're all sorted with the Great Gatsby we're move. Sorted. We're Gatsby'd out. We're Gatsby'd out. So what's the answer to your question, darling? And the answer was called Aloysius. Of course yeah, it was. called Aloysius Bear. And if you didn't know that, you'd be living in that Chinaman's pipe again. Just, Just so. back to the pipe again, surely oh. not. No, what's going on with this pipe? Oh, now, of course, yeah. we, we, are, we are giving um, a, a 1950s style cocktail party. Why? Why we are, are we doing that? We are. We are. Oh, a little bit more 60s with the hair tonight, I know. But this is the I best. Had, you know, I had a ponytail. I put it up. I decided yeah. to go past tonight and didn't show off my earrings, which you got me, actually. I did get you. I know from Ragdale Hall, I believe. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. So why are we dressed as the 1950s? Well, of course, after war, um, people were looking to, to get a bit more exciting. Rationing finished in 1954. It was being phased out over the last, over a few years in the early 50s. Though. So actually by 1954, everyone was ready to party. And of course, what are we, Joe? We are uber? Glam, darling. Glam. We are so glam. Oh, that's my mum and dad. Oh, look at this one. That's actually taken in 1950. Oh, I wish that, my mum's waist was 22 inches. Oh. My dad put it hands round her waist. Can you imagine that? Oh. Why did I inherit her jeans? Oh, she's beautiful, Joe. Uh, and are stunning. you? Yeah, absolutely are gorgeous. You? Absolutely stunning. Oh, lo lovely, lovely. But the thing was, what I was going to say was, yes, it was glamour, but if you think about the Gatsby and the Evelyn War thing, mm -hmm. they, were, they were all posh people, weren't they, having their mm. cocktail yes, parties? Were. Whereas by the time we're talking about now, Everyone mm. could have one. It was exactly. it was Stepford Wives. It was Wisteria <laughs> Lane. It was Arabia. Everyone could everyone could have a go. Oh, lovely! Yeah. Well, let's quickly because what we haven't done is give the answer to the Spillers question right at the beginning. So oh, we're going to give that. Now hold that thought, everyone. So, of course, Spillers. What did Spillers do, or who or why? Spillers, of course, made flour. It was the people who made flour. They also, before all the dog lovers get on there, they also made pet <laughs> foods. So, of course, yes. who remembers Spillers win a lot? That was yes, one of the ones mate. they did. Of course, Spillers, I don't really think is a company anymore. It was, it's was it been sold many, many times, uh, most recently to the Kerry Group. And guess what the Kerry Group make, Joe? Monkey stuff. They make cheese strings. <laughs> oh, what a come down from how to be a fabulous hostess to a the cheese, cheese straws. Oh, I would, be, I would no. not be serving cheese straws at my cartel party. No, we will not be free. doing that. But, Joe, I have a question for you. Yes. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to know the answer to this. It's a serious question. Joe, 
I'm listening. Does your home literally shine out a welcome to your guests? Do you have gleaming floors, furniture, winking bright windows and laundry fresh <laughs> curtains? Do you? Do you, Joe? Oh, my goodness. How could you even have to ask? You know the answer. <laughs> I know you do, because I've been it's to your very, house many It's very times. clean, but not very tidy, is the honest no, thing. Oh, You're welcome. Well, that, of course, is another quote from the great guide we are following this evening. Our course, Bible. Our Bible to the our Bible. party. So we have a few little drinks already. There are going to be plenty more. Don't you worry. <laughs> but the most important thing, what don't we have? We don't have any food, Joe. Oh, food. Do you, I've, I've got some food. My mum, but you see the well, it's a bit like that. My mum used to make these things. They were she used to boil up eggs and then take out the middle, mix it yeah. up with mayo, and yeah. add in some paprika and salt and pepper and curry if you like. So I've made those look in, in oh, the great. Mum. I'll definitely have one of those. Yeah, I've got to tell you a funny story about me and a cocktail. My mum at a cocktail party. I went into my mum's room and she was getting ready. It was really trendy in the 60s to wear a wig. I don't know why. It was a bit of a, a fad. Lots of ladies like to wear these wigs. Anyway, my mum was there. She had a lucky hair of her own, but she wanted to wear this wig. So when she, only I pop, don't tell anyone I'm wearing a wig. I won't, mum. I won't, mum. I was about three or four. Anyway, we yeah. got down the stairs. I managed to get through to the sweet, sweet trays. And then I shouted out to the whole room, my mum's wearing a wig. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> And you're I still know. here to tell the tale. Well, luckily everyone just laughed, so that was all oh. right. <laughs> well, I, I haven't, I haven't really pushed my bateau out tonight. I've got a little cocktail sausage for you, Joe. Have one. Ooh. There you go, darling. There you. Thank go. you. And since they're we are both, hopefully they're veggie. Yes, they are. They're corn, since we none of us eat meat, so that's fine. <laughs> I'll put them over there. Even they just look a bit funny, I think. But there you go. Enjoy your sausage, as they say. Enjoy. I like a nice sausage, me. I've heard that, Joe. I know that about you. I know you like a sort of... So you were talking You were talking to us about um, housewives. Yes, indeed. Well, of course, um, there was, you know, you'd get your Stepford wives and your Desperate Housewives. And here we've got lovely Terry from Desperate Housewives Aww. making a cocktail in aid of charity. Mm. So we'd like to honour the lovely Terry tonight and make a Demeter, I believe it's pronounced. Ooh. So it has got... Three black cherries. I'm on the cherries again. Three you black cherries cherry carved and pitted. Uh, luckily, mm -hmm. I've got an entire cherry orchard full. Somebody would be pleased about that, the cherry orchard. Um, oh, yes. I know. I'm forgetting. Nice about reference that. there, Joe. Like Very it. Very cultural. Very uh, cultural. And a flower cordial. I've got beaver, but there are other ones. <laughs> <bands. laughs> I'm not sure we need to know about your beaver. Yes, beaver. Don't be rude. <laughs> Honestly, she's just so incorrigible. Um, <laughs> Flipping it. And I'm going to use, uh, I'm just going to use London Dry because there's a lot of flavours going on already. And then it's topped oh, up with soda water. So okay. here we have this one I made earlier. And I'm going to top it up with my soda water. Mm. I use Waitrose, but there are other brands. Gosh, you are so fancy, Jo. Oh, you know me. I do. Right then. Let's, oh, let's give it a proper old fizz up, shall we? I don't know. Give me a sec. All right. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Oh, oh, that smells good, I'll tell you that. Oh, cheers. Cheers. What do you think? Absolutely scrumptious. Good choice, Terry. Um, and, those, choice, Terry. and those cherries are going to be worth eating afterwards. Oh, well, you are the cherry woman, that is for sure. Me so, Megan, <laughs> Megan Blake, that is so nice. Um, oh, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Please forgive me. Is it Meve McDonald? May Meve? May of? May. Oh, I, I can't see it. I haven't, as usual, I haven't um, got my specs. It's a beautiful name, but I'm not sure how to pronounce it. <laughs> I got it wrong, but anyway, yes, it is well tasty, my darling. Well tasty, well tasty. Indeed. So, we're just going to ask you a couple of quick etiquette questions. So, we hope you've been watching, although Joe is actually doing it wrong. There's a little bit of a spoiler there. Thank you. So, Joe, hit us with the first question in the etiquette section. Right then, it, when you went to your cocktail party, there was a correct hand in which to hold your cocktail glass. Now, there is actually a fairly good reason for this. Mm. What? Which hand was it, and why? Hmm. And my question is super simple, and you'll all know the answers to this. You can think of things. I just want to know three things that you can put the word cocktail with. So we are at, for example, a cocktail party, and you are still very welcome. Um, <laughs> I would like to know other things that you can put the word cocktail with. What can you think of, Joe? Well, do you know what? When we were having a little look at this, there was one I came across I've never heard before, and that was Go cocktail on. whisper. Oh! Now, apparently, you know, you'd, you'd go up the road to 
Beryl's at number six mm-hmm. and everyone would get a bit tiddly in this hour and a half cocktail party and tongues would wag and gossip would be given. Um, oh. So those were all the cocktail whispers, all the little stories that would be coming out about everybody in the close. Um, and it was, apparently it's also possibly a reference to the fumes that wafted around your living room at the end of the cocktail party. So I think cocktail I whispers. Like mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Cheers. So. I'm going give to it back to me, Demeter or Demeter. Yes, or we'll have a quick squeak and then we're going to go and give you the answers quickly to this one mm. before mm. we move on. Because I'm feeling it's a bit quiet at our party. There's not much atmosphere going on. Joe, give us the answer to your question. Um, it was, the, you should hold your cocktail in your left hand so that you can still shake hands with your right hand. But also, if you happen to need to shake hands, you don't want to be swapping across and shaking hands with a very cold hand. Nobody no. likes a cold handshake. And nobody likes a what are those whoop handshakes. Nobody likes that. A nice firm one. Yeah. We only like firm ones, don't we, Joe? We only like a firm one. We only like a firm one. Firm Always ones firm. only need apply. Exactly. And those few things about cocktails, what can we put with them? Let's have a little look. Well, there are loads of answers to this. So well done if you've got any of these at all. Of course, cocktail dress you could be wearing. You can have a cocktail onion, but more of those later. You can have a cocktail sausage. I've already demonstrated my sausage. Um, you can have cocktail peanuts. You can have a cocktail stick. You saw my stick, as it were. Um, you can have a cocktail shaker. We've been using our shakers. We can have a cocktail menu, a cocktail lounge, a cocktail party, a cocktail bar, a cocktail hour, and a cocktail ring do you have a cocktail ring Jane? i've never heard of a cocktail ring but I, this is getting a bit like the generation game isn't it i'm expecting there to be a cuddly toy and a bonding <laughs> set any second now exactly well you can have pretty much whatever you like so i think a cocktail ring is that thing you do with prawns and there's some sort of gloopy pink sauce in the yeah, middle yeah, and yeah. Mary rose Pro- Mary rose, Mary sauce. rose sauce oh yeah, yeah. mum always used to do one but i didn't know it was called a cocktail ring no who knew i think so, or joanna put out the prawns love Aww. there's a good girl no, oh, you are good, aren't you? All right, but Joe, I'm I'm sorry. It is just like way too quiet in here. Can you do something about it? I can. I can phone for some music. Hello, hello. Could you please send in the Frank Sinatra, Frank Sinatra impersonator? Thank you. This is my 1950s phone. I didn't want to leave it out. No, it's definitely in, Joe. Frank, of course, Frank's a very good choice for... Um, uh, a party like this because he was very well known for liking his gin at the Savoy Bar in oh. London. Whenever he went to London, he always called in there to the iconic American bar and had a massive gin. What are they called? Those things? They're called martinis. Martini. Um, he had lots and lots of gin and a, a, just a, a whisper, mm. a cocktail whisper of a the vermouth. whisper. And the barman knew that when it was Frank, they had to. Pack it up with ice because he liked it really, really cold. And apparently, after hours, he had been known to mm. to uh, sneak in and play the piano. I don't think anyone would have complained about having a, a crafty Frank Sinatra. I would have all to that. themselves. You can imagine they're going to back him up, and there's Frank playing away. You'd be oh. delighted. Right, little question for you: What was this lovely crooner affectionately known as? What was oh. Frank Sinatra's nickname? I know the answer what to that. What was this gin lover's nickname? Well, I'm going to hand you over now mm-hmm. to Sam. Excellent. In a minute. Oh, is he there? <laughs> Come fly with me. Let's fly. Let's fly away. If you could use some exotic food. There's a bar in far Bombay. Come fly with me. Let's fly. Let's fly away. Come fly with me. We'll float down to Peru. In Llama Land, there's a one-man band, and he'll toot his flute for you. Come fly with me. We'll float down in the blue. Hey, what is this, ma'am? Oh, that's my cocktail. Oh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> oh, the cheek of it! The cheek of it, Joe. That's oh. astonishing. Do you need another oh, one, yeah. darling? It's, it. it's nicked off with me deviled eggs as well. Oh, what? Would you like some more cocktail or not? Are you okay? She's gone. Oh, yes, please. I'll have another one, please. Are you ready, darling? Here we go. Yeah. There you are, sweet pie. Excellent, excellent. Oh, well done. Enjoy, enjoy. Well, of course, Frank Sinatra, tell us the answer, Joe, because I know. 
Yes, it was old brown eyes. <gasps> old brown eyes, you minx. Oh, blue eyes. Oh, oh blue oh, eyes, of course. course. And of course, what I'm going to do is I have to make a cocktail for Frank Sinatra. Now, Frank, he yeah. used to perform at Las Vegas. In fact, he performed at Las Vegas for over 20 years. I'm going to move my punch just over there, just a second. Let's put it that way. Otherwise, I've got too much punch going on. So <laughs> he, started, he started his shows in 1951 at the Desert Inn. So I'm going to make, in Frank's honor, I'm going to make a casino. But I'm going to make a casino not one, but two ways. So I'm going to make one in a martini glass and one in a Tom Collins glass. I've already put some ice in my Tom Collins glass and I've already put some ice in my shaker. So here it goes. So I'm going to make double bubble. So I'm going to use uh, old Tom, I think, for this one because I think that would go down really well. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it. It's quite rounded. So here we go. So I'm going to put, you're going to like this, Joe, using the big side. Yeah. Tick tock. One. Shall I put another? Shall I? Oh, go on. Spoil yourself. Cheers. Oh, well, look, you don't drink. Nick will hoover up later. He will. He will. So look at that. That's nearly the end of my old Tom. Oh, no. These are Tom oh. times indeed. Austerity measures and all <laughs> things. I can't believe it. So I've got some uh, cherry liqueur, oh. which I've already measured out. So I'm going to pop that in there. I've then got some, oh, it's looking nice and full. I've got some lemon juice as well. So I'm going to pop that in there too. And I'm going to use this time, instead of normal Angostura bitters, I'm actually going to use some orange bitters. Now, as the name suggests, they're just a bit more orangey. So I'm just going to put a few little dabs in there. Mm, get some dabs in there. Oh, thank you, Helen Reynolds. Have a little swing with Frank there. Well, so, oh, so yes, Frank. we love that. And here we go again. Back in the mood. <laughs> oh, that's my bingo wings going. There we go. There we go. So there we go. I'm going to put, oh, that's it looks there. amazing. <laughs> Oh, Sandy Tanner Smith trying to bake banana bread while she watches the show. <laughs> right, right. You know what? I have, I have made the perfect amount. So what I'm going to do in the long one, in the Tom Collins glass, I'm actually going to top that up with some soda. Yeah, you like a long one, don't you? <laughs> yeah. I like a long and firm one, I think, as we all know. And uh, so I'm going to pop that one over there, just as well the children aren't watching, although there we go. And then what I'm going to garnish those with, of course, it is the show of the cherries. I'm going to top that with a, little, uh, with a stalk, by the looks of it. I'm going what to are you doing? I don't want the stalk. I want the cherry. Come on, girl. Get a move on. Honestly. Gracious. She's so bossy. Right. They are my fabulous casinos, and I will taste them both for you. So let's have a taste the long one first. Oh, I could drink that all day. Actually, that's lovely. <laughs> and you know what really comes through? The, the cherry actually really comes through. That is yummy. I'll put it in my little line here, and then I'll oh, taste it. I think I might go back to that one. Mm. I can't mm. remember what it was, but I like that. Oh, my word. I've forgotten what this is, but I'm liking it. <laughs> this one, I tell you, this one is, I, I, think, I think I might not make it through the evening because this is absolutely yummy. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Joe, I want some more music. It's too Moving quiet, on. Too right, quiet for my party. Leave it with me. All right. Hello. Ooh. Hello. Can you send, send in the jazz singer, please? Right then, we're going, to, uh, we're going to have some lovely music now with Kirsty. It's going to sing us Sunny Side of the Street. Now, oh. what in America yeah. can you get Sunny Side Up? Oh, well, of course I know that. Here we go. Right then, here we go with Kirsty Hughes. Mm. Grab your coat and grab your hat. Leave your worries on the doorstep. Just direct your feet to the sunny side of the street. Can you hear that pitter pat? And that happy tune is your step. Life can be so sweet on the sunny side of the street. I used to walk in the shade with my blues on parade. Now I'm not afraid this rover is crossing right over if I never had a set. I'd be rich as Rockefeller, goldest at my feet. 
liberty, I tell you, Joe. It's a liberty. Oh, God. You might have to give me another one. Oh, no. Tell us the answer to the... Uh, the oh, I nearly said the answer then. Tell us the answer to the sunny side thing. It's an egg. Of course it is. Like my egg. How do you like your eggs in the morning? I like mine with a kiss. Oh, okay. look at that. They're all the sunny side oh. up. Oh, I feel so much better. I feel so much better for the music. But do you know yeah. what? We what? What don't we, what, we don't talk about tonic a lot. We often we all do all we usually say we just say tonic by Fever Tree. But actually, I'm going back over to the other side of the pond. I'm sticking my American hat on again, and I want to talk about um, tonic in America because Americans where were we? But we're quite strange people because they didn't used to drink gin and tonics. Can you believe that, Joe? Yes, I can believe well, that. Oh, okay, she can. All right. <laughs> now, interestingly, that all changed in 1952, which is why we're talking about it tonight, with this fabulous gentleman. Now, this is Commander Edward Whitehead. He's quite a dude, as you can see. He's got a massive moustache and beard thing going on there. Now, he was the uh, president of Sweeps USA, and they opened a massive plant in, um, in 1952. And he insisted, so Commander Edward insisted on being part of the advertising campaign and I can quite see why now he was famous for wearing a white suit and there he is in his white suit now he is informing the very 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 silly American people that they are of course having their gin and tonic the wrong way because don't you forget you never swizzle a Swepps tonic and he's telling no. everyone oh yes sir of course of he course. looks a bit like Jackie O <laughs> I think that woman there looks like Jackie O. Yes, yeah, she does. I think um, old Commander yeah. Edward looks a bit like Colonel Sanders, actually. But there we go. That's a whole different thing. <laughs> <laughs> but he was he was an incredible guy. So by the end of the five years, not only had sales of Sweeps Tonic increased by 500%, well, they would because no one was buying it before, but actually every home in America was actually making gin and tonics, which is hurrah for that. But hurrah of course, for them. they always had, Americans love all things Brit, don't they, Joe? They do. Think about the, think about the beef eater gin, of course. They like, liked a bit of that. Very clever marketing because, of course, uh, most of them used to just put their name on the front, but Beef Eater was one of the first to go that step further and stick a picture on, and they liked, the, liked yeah. having a bit of Britain, didn't they, with a nice yeah, bit of Tower of London and whatnot. Oh, so, yeah. yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So we use Fever Tree, don't we, Jo? We do, generally, yes. So it's um, given Schweppes a bit of a run for its money, hmm. and I we prefer think. it because... It Got no artificial flavorings and no artificial uh, sweetness or anything. And then they've been going since 2004. And they, they've been doing a great job with um, Malaria No More UK as well. So, you know, great sales, but also yeah. putting a bit back to help with the uh, trying to stamp out malaria. So, yeah, no, we like yeah. that. We've just got our fever tree. tree. We yeah. salute fever tree. Yes, yeah, salute. We salute fever tree with one of our many drinks. Well, I'll have these two. So just we've got a couple of um a couple of little questions, not many this week. So tell us a question on tonic. Now then. Um why oh crikey, where are we? I've lost my place. I've lost my place. Do you want me to tell you, darling? Yeah, why honest? is it very dangerous yeah. to deal with neat quinine? Mm. Hmm. And of course, we've already talked about malaria, but um, and the tonic helps ward off malaria. <laughs> but what is it in the tonic that helps ward off malaria, and why? Why is that? <laughs> okay, all right. So we're well, going to we're not going to loiter on this tonic business because we are much more interested in the gin. And people ask us all the time, "What is the perfect gin and tonic? How do you make the perfect gin and tonic?" Of course, as we always say at York Gin, it's your drink, your way. But we're going to just show you a couple of perfect. Gin and tonics. Jojo, you're to start, my lovely. Yeah, well, well, look, um, you might remember we spoke about the, the size of your ice cube the other week. <laughs> Don't be so personal. Well, you know, I like a big one, as we all know. And <laughs> the larger, the better, because I'll tell you for why. If you get a whapping great ice cube like that. Yeah, it, oh, that, is, that is a big one. It will keep your gin lovely and cold without dissolving and diluting your drink. I'm going to have Outlaws. This is my favourite. Apart from yummy, yum. I've been drinking all night, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have uh, some Outlaw, um, which is of course our Navy strength gin, mm -hmm. which brought us home a double gold medal uh, from the San Francisco Liquor Awards, which means every single member of that panel gave it a gold medal. So I d I'm not the only one in this in this place that thinks it's a fabulous gin. It's officially one of the best gins in the world. So 
whapping great portion of that. And I'm going to top it up with my favourite uh, tonic. It's only my personal favourite. Everyone likes other things. And a London dry can take anything you like, to be honest. It can take sweet. It can take savoury. So you can do what you want with it. It's a fabulous base for any kind of a drink. I, I actually like a lot of tonic. I know Emma would kill me for this. She mm. only likes a dribble. Just uh, a little She's bit. A, I like American. a lot. I like it. You what, darling? Is she American? Americans only like a dribble as well. <laughs> I know, say that. You're saying that. You could never actually buy a gin and tonic in America, could you? You had to buy a tonic water and a gin because they wouldn't give you a long drink. That's true indeed. Yeah, it's bizarre. Now, I'm going to bring out the um, peppercorn because, of course, um, the uh, outlaw gin has more, well, 30% or so extra botanicals in it. Um, it's a much stronger gin than the London Dry. So uh, what do I I usually say it's... Um, it's the it's the London dry with boots on, and Susanna tells us it's. <laughs> well, I always say I say it's like uh, London dry's older brother who's been down the gym a bit and just beat <laughs> up. I always say that. I think it's like it's been. Well, I always, actually, what I say, I'm terrible. I always say it's been down the gin a lot and beefed up. Down the gin a lot, anyway. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's basically the the London dry plus. All and right. I'm so going to bring out. I'm going to bring out the peppercorn in it because I love pepper. Go, go. Um, so I'm going to put a garnish in that. Of course, we do actually have garnish at at, uh, at York Gin um, available in little bags. I always forget to. I always forget to tell people. I'm sure. I forget as well. Is the truth. So it's yes, I put that in. Um, I would normally have lime if I'm absolutely honest, but I mm -hmm. as I said earlier, I haven't got any. So I'm going to pop in some lemon. It's just as lovely. Enough. And there I am. And a twizzle of this all. And what I'm going to do, give it a twizzle, give it a swirl before I start. I gave it a swizzle because Mr. Schweppes isn't here. I can do what we I like. Slap your hand. Cheers, my darling. And oh, what I'm going to do, it looks lovely. Give it a big swig. So what I'm going to do is actually I am going to use our classic London dry. But what I've done, I don't have any fancy big ice cubes like Joe. I've just got little ice cubes. So I filled my glass. Why wouldn't you? So I'm going to put a big, there you go, about that sort of much in there that's a lot because i really like a long gin and tonic i like a full copper glass now emma told me this week and i was slightly blown away by this fact that actually i'm going to put some um refreshingly light tonic in there um she told me that these copper glasses hold just over a pint we're joking that's what she told me that's that's what she no, bloody hell no I've wonder you're in the toilet all the time a pint of gin and tonic gin well i've got a pint of gin and tonic there and i'm going to put in because i like to bring out the actual juniper so i'm going to put look at these cutesy cups have you ever seen anything as cute as these everyone these are york gin little coffee cups here Ooh, very yeah. nice so I'm going to put a little few juniper berries over the top, making sure they weren't the pepper ones. I didn't want to. They are indeed the juniper ones. And what I'm going to do, because I've been very lucky, I've had a little visit from Harry this week. Harry has been... Ooh. And he brought me a load of botanicals and he brought me some dried lemon peel, which is one of the botanicals in our London Dry. So I'm going to pop a couple. You know what? I'm going to live right on the edge. I'm just going to give it a very gentle stir. And for me, and it is only me, that is my perfect gin and tonic. I Very like nice. Long Very drink. Nice. Actually, S Sandy Vaughan, I do like it a bit diluted, but I do like it strong. Oh, I could drink. I, see that? I could actually probably drink that. There's probably, oh, I don't know. How many measures did I put in there? Oh, who knows? About a million. About yeah, a Sarah million. Hansen, you've got to try the outlaw. It's the business. It, the, the bit, it is actually the business. But it it's is. The, it is. Yeah, it, Hanel, Helen Reynolds, we're shit about, oh, we're crap at selling these bloody garnish bags you just forget they're there because we get so carried away with the gin that we forget to say look how pretty they look, look it does make a difference and so i'm going to say cheers to shannon i know you're watching tonight thank you as always for supporting us mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. so they are our perfect gin and tonics so now we're going to move on so remember last week you remember last week we did the weird charade thing do you, know, do you know, it's a funny thing about last week. I don't really know much about it at all. I don't even remember having my tea last week. So, all right. Okay. So this week, what we're going to do is, since television was such a massive thing in the 50s, you know, by the Queen's coronation in, in, in 1953, uh, there weren't so many television sets, but suddenly this event, this coronation, everybody wanted a television set. So 526,000 television sets were sold, particularly for the Queen's coronation. So, I mean, I, my mum's always told the story. Hello, mum, by the way. Hello. Um, Hello, Maureen. <laughs> my mum's always tells the story that they that they got one specially for the event and everyone crowds around it and it's a screen like this big, you know. So there <laughs> it is. So Brilliant. what we're going to do 
is we are going to just ask a couple of very quick questions about television and then hold on to your hats everyone we're going to play a game so i would like to know in which year though because we always talk about the bbc we all have our bbc voices i would like to know in which year did the younger, hipper, commercial ITV start? So why did I, when did ITV start? Go on, Joe. what's your half of the question? Uh, my, my question is, um, why did the BBC yeah. decide not to broadcast between 6 and 7 p.m.? Oh, well, I can have a, I can have a pretty good guess at yeah, that. Yeah, there's probably a couple of, couple of salient answers there. Yeah. <laughs> they were just pointing to a few. There we go. So, ITV, which was my half of the question. Now, they're really interesting because they were responsible for lots of import television. So Americans, I appear to be Team America today for some bizarre reason. I'm, I'm a Brit through and through. Um, but they brought Ooh. across what? Shannon, what? Shannon Baines has got it correct. So it's Judith Lightfoot. Well done, Shannon. Shannon. See, she's, she trains from the best. That's why. She trains from the best. <laughs> my beautiful niece. There she is. And it's her 18th soon. So... I think it's okay to drink gin, Shannon. It's fine. Yeah. Anyway, but wow. one of the American imports that, that that we so loved was, of course, I Love Lucy. Now, I Love Lucy was, um, I, 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 well, look, there she is, Lucille Ball. Now, <laughs> one of the best episodes, it's constantly voted the best episode of I Love Lucy, is the one where she gets a bit tipsy when she's selling. She's actually doing an ad for an alcoholic vitamin drink. And this is, and I'm, uh, I've had a few now, so I'll ho fingers crossed how this goes. Vitamita, oh no, I've had a few drinks. It's, it's off already. Vitamita Vegemin, there it is. It's Vitamita <laughs> So unbelievably, and I can't believe anyone would do this. She got a bit sloshed while presenting. Who would do that, Joe? I can't imagine. I well, can't imagine. You've, I, I just found these yesterday. It's so funny. I was going through my drawers and you'd brought me these back from America. Let me see look. That's, oh. That's, oh. Oh, that's us. Oh. That's us. And what a coincidence. There it comes. There she is. Lucy. Do you know where I bought those? I that's bought the, those. That's the actual episode, look. It is. It is. I bought those coasters for Joe uh, when I was traveling in my travel world. I, when I was traveling from Las Vegas down to LA and we stopped, it was like the road to nowhere. I tell you, we never saw a living soul for about 10 hours. But um, we stopped at this weird diner. And we should, <laughs> maybe we should have done that. We stopped at this weird diner and um, in the there was a gift shop. It must be, I mean, there weren't that many diners, so I think everyone traveling from the, from uh, Las Vegas to to LA stopped there. And there was this weird sort of 1950s vibe going on in the in the gift shop only because the diner was not a 1950s vibe at all. The food was <laughs> I can't know. <laughs> But um, but we managed somehow. But that's where I bought them. So I bought them on the road from LA to Ve uh, sorry from Vegas to LA. I know. I yeah, I'm sorry, a bit of a road trip story. Oh, we had an amazing trip that year. Oh God, no, I won't go on in my. I, you know what I'm like. I ramble on about my travel logs again. I'm very lucky. I get to travel a lot. I'm very, very, very. But not at the moment, sadly. I'm not at the moment. But you know what, Joe? Where else would I rather be? I would. There is no other place I would rather be than my house in in just outside York at the moment because it is fabulous. I'm loving it. I'm loving the walks. I'm loving the peace. I'm loving everything about it, which is probably not what everyone can say is the truth. I oh, know, we're very lucky. Very right. lucky we, indeed. We back to those answers because there were only two questions, weren't there? So it was 1955, I believe, that yes, an ITV was for ITV. And it was super cool. It was super cool. And what about your one, my darling? And the BBC thought they would yeah. broadcast between six and seven so that parents could get their kids off to bed. <laughs> I know it's hilarious, isn't it? Well, they closed down, and so the, they thought, "Well, kids won't be going." I want to see the telly, so off they went to the bed without any any shenanigans, and possibly also uh, for this very reason, so people could be having their cocktail parties in peace. So That's yes, not, I have Children to say, cocktails. Neither of my kids would ever have fallen for that ever. <laughs> <laughs> But oh, there you go. There you go. So there's a little bit about television. Now, one right of them. We're going to have a game. We are. One of the programs that was really popular at the time, 
I might, I might need to clear some space, actually. <laughs> one of the pop, well, there you are. Move it forward to there. One of the games that was really popular, one of the quiz shows and game shows at the time, was a, uh, was a uh, program called What's My Line? Now, that was a program whereby um, people um, had a profession and the panel had four questions in which to guess their profession. Now, that's no good for us. We're not interested in that, but we are interested in cocktails. So we are going to play What's My Cocktail? And Joe, you're up first. So, I'm the guesser, Joe is the maker. Are you ready, Joe? I'm ready. Are oh, you ready? I would I'm like ready. Ready. I would like to know which York gin are you using? I am using Yeah. What are you using? Oh, I'm using Tom. Le, Le Vieux Thomas. Ooh, old Tom. I love old Tom. Mm, that's yeah. quite obvious. A nice big bottle. splash. Two, two shots of old Tom. Nice. Nice. Uh, what sort of glass are you using? A long one. Oh, as we said previously, we all like a long one. So, uh, are there any other mixers with it? Yes, I have got some. Uh... Oh, pussies look huge. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> okay. And what's it topped up with? It's topped up with club soda. Okay. This, I think I know, but I'm going to ask you the final question. What garnish? I am going to garnish it with two things. Mm. Oh, a very fancy, well, it looks a bit withered now, but I made it earlier. And it was really nice earlier. Now it was a <laughs> oh, Joe, they are fancy. They no, were I... fancy. They're no, lemon no. wheels. I'm going to shove them in. Lemon wheels and a cherry. I'm going to have two because I like a cherry. Well, I think the cherry has cherry given it away. So we'll just give our lovely viewers just a moment to have a think about that before we give you the answer, okay? Yes. Yeah, so I'm just going to... Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm, and I'm putting some ice in. There we go. On, I'm just going to put some ice in my glass and then we'll give you the answer to that one. I've got no cat. I've, I've taken away the cat's way up to me tonight because I didn't want him up here because he loves the ice. And he was also, dear viewer. Ooh, oh, oh, crikey. Did you forget? <laughs> you didn't forget. That is really strong. Did you not put the soda in it? I did put the soda in it. Top it up, lovely. Top it up with soda. No, no. This is my one of my favourite cocktails. And Sandy, you're absolutely right. Thank you. Joe, put us out of our misery. What is it? It's a Thomas Collins. A Thomas a Tom Collins. A Tom Collins. It's actually one of my favourite gins and my favourite cocktails. But you do need it long. You need it topped right the way up with soda. Otherwise, you get a bit of a... Oh. Whoa, Joe, that's not a good face. Don't I think it, I might have put too much lemon juice in. Oh, never do that. Never too much lemon juice. All right. I'm so going to counteract it with some syrup. Oh, really? Okay, go, go. Okay, I'm now, I can't remember how I've got one, two, three, four, five, five, quad. Is it, a, is it a quad park? I don't know, quadruple, is that quadruple park? No, quad is, quad four, what's five? Oh, anyway, someone will tell us, someone will tell us. Are you ready, darling? I'm yeah. ready. Do me. Right, as what, a, what kind of glass are you making it in? Well, those that were watching me earlier would have noticed I was using an old-fashioned glass, and I, and now I'm going to answer this one for you. I've actually put some ice in it. Now, truly... They don't like ice, but I love ice, so I am definitely nice. I'm, I'm like you, I'm like you. I'm, I'm a terrible, I can't be dealing without it. Right, what? okay. Um, so, what, apart from the gin... Oh, I'll put the gin in now. Then. Yeah, your gin's going in, isn't it? And, oh, well, I know it's gin, because they're all gin-based cocktails. So that's, they that's, a well, waste of a que that's a waste of a question. Oh, hang on, I've put too much in. I'm going to have to tip some out. I should have put it in my little box here. Oh, I, I know, know Diane Tomlinson. I'm I'm missing the cat photo bombing as well. I know. Well, he's actually right here. <laughs> so, so that, okay. What's he got? Paris. I've got Paris. So, what's your next question, Joe? Who's a boy? Who's a boy? Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Um, Who's right, okay, So, did you tell me what other spirits you put in? No, I haven't done that yet. So, what I'm going to put in is some. A vermouth rosso, some rosso. So these are equal parts. I'm going to make it in my big jug, actually, because I'm making a, I'm making a big one. And Nick and yeah, um, 
Susanna, what gin did he use? London Dry. I use, I use classic London Dry, thank yeah, you. Yeah, Jane, Jane Lee, it's London Dry she's gone with. But you yes, could have... I've gone with you could have, you could have also used Outlaw, which is also a London Dry, but just stronger. Uh, I need to see the rest of the evening. So this is the giveaway. So already I've put gin. Yeah, put, I'm, I'm uh, knowing what I'm it is. Up, so, and now I'm going to put the Campari in. <laughs> yeah, Carol Weaver, I'm with you on the bucket load. <laughs> The bucket load of gin. I just give my little rinse or a vein. Hello, Carol, AJ, Jess, and Harriet. Woo! So I'm going to put some ice in my glass. We are going to go like that. Oh, there it goes. I'm going to strain it out, Joe. So, da, da, da. and I'm going to put. What's your last question? I know what is going on there because I've already guessed. It's going to be an orange. It is an orange. So what? What have I made? You have made a Negroni. And they're good on. Look at some of my, one of my fancy little orange slices has gone in there. And per that. Negrone, per favore. Per favore. Sì. This Mi is one of my. Molto. Mm -hmm. so, oh right. my God. I have to say, now I made this one earlier. Now I'm, I'm just looking at our clock. I know we're running over everyone, but we'll go for it. So that's the one I made earlier, which I called a poor man's Negroni. And that's the one with Kari. This was the one for Clara. This was Clara's. Remember right back at the beginning? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was Clara's one, and she had the two different types of vermouth. Yeah. That's my one, and it's got Campari in. Yeah. Honest answer? Campari one. Campari one. Yeah, I, yeah. Love, I, I love, I love Campari. The, in fact, I'm going to just keep that one. Mm -hmm. I, I forgot what that Oh, Joe, your turn. That's nice. I like that one. I don't know what it is. I've forgotten, but I like it. I um, like it. Right. right. Okay, my turn. What, 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 uh, Ooh. where are we? It's, oh, God almighty, where are we? Come on, Joe. It is yours. I know ah. what it is. I know what it is. It's this one. It's got a sticker on it. Go on, Ooh, then. Writing. <laughs> Go on. Good one. Is it, what sort of glass is it in? It's a long glass. Excellent. And what gin are you using? I am using... Mm-hmm. I am using London Dry York. Classic London Dry. Very nice indeed. Now, the next yes. question for me is... Are there any other alcohols in it? Oh, my goodness. What isn't there in it? So, I'll tell you. It has one and a half measures of York gin. Nice. A measure of Benedictine. Lovely. A measure of lime juice. Which yeah, yeah. Bit, it was a bit of a cheat, but fine. Yeah, it's not okay. fresh, but it's still lime juice. Yeah, um, right. I've got the simple syrup. Yeah. And I have got cherry brandy. And I'm topping it up with club soda. Well, that was my next question, but I want to know because I, I top it up with club soda. I think I know what it is, but uh, what will tell me for sure is what is the garnish. Let me show you. Oh, you are the cherry queen. You are the queen of the cherries. I, I am. Stick it in, Joe. I I'm cannot gonna... lie. Oh. And, and go on. What's that one? Is that lemon or lime? It's oh, it's lemon. lemon. Have you told you I've got no lime? I know, I know. That. You haven't got any lime, so it's lemon. All right, so that is yeah. lemon. Delicious. Go on, give it a swig. Ooh, knocking me out, Law. You're very, very, oh very you're, you're not very, you're, you're, I'm like a big drink. I, I was going to put masses of soda in, in one of those, you know what? I don't there know. Is it, you don't top it, you don't, whoa. Oh, I forgot to put the soda in. <laughs> no wonder it's so bloody strong. Oh, in fact, if anybody knows this, can you put it on the I put it on the comments because I don't know the answer to this. What is the name of the glass? I'm going to draw it for you. It goes like this. So it starts like a cocktail glass and goes like that, and then it does that and goes out. It goes like that and like that. So it's a big glass. If anybody knows the answer to that, please put it in. And obviously, Joe, I haven't got my specs on, so you need to tell me what the answer is. If anybody says that, if so anyone on, comes up with it, I will tell you. Tell me, because I need to know the answer to that. Joe, show me what you've made. Now you've put the blooming soda in it. I'm just popping in my soda because it's too strong. Because you didn't. Because she right, didn't. It is way too strong. I am telling you, I am sitting in the long bar at Raffles Hotel. Of course you are. Oh, that's fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Excellent. It is, of course, I'm very worried about my outlaw. I keep knocking it. A Singapore sling. It's yeah. a Singapore sling. And my goodness me, that is tasty. Good. So this is a very quick last one, okay? Very, very, very quick. So this is the last drink. Quickly, Joe, ask me your questions. Yes, Pam Bishop, I'm with you. I've Pam, I've put on five pounds since oh, the bloody it. lockdown. Dear right, God. Are you watching? Yes. Right. 
Yeah, Pam says that glass sounds like her figure since lockdown. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, is anybody watching? Oh, Carol, Carol says it might be a tulip glass. Oh, it might be. Because actually, yeah. that's a good yeah. idea. That's a very that good idea. Well, I just put, because she's not answering. <laughs> are you, are you answering many questions? Well, answering or asking me any questions? Just watch. I am. Your- I was just going to tell Helen. I, I genuinely did forget to put the soda in. It's just a bit late on, that's all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Susanna, which, what kind of, we'll always start with what kind of glass, please. Well, this is a martini glass. Uh, uh, so, glass. Okay, so I'm guessing it's a martini of some it kind is a or martini. another. So, which gin are you popping in this one? So, sorry, say that again, I missed it, darling. Which gin, which York gin are you I've using for your martini? I've used York London Dry. I think that London might dry. have something in it, but there we go, because it's not the right colour. Anyway, so I've put uh, about guys five shots of york gin classic Jeez, oh, me. i've also oh, is this, it sounds like something that uh, frank sinatra would like exactly <laughs> but i've also put just a tiny whisper of vermouth in there is that but a cocktail another, whisper it is a cocktail whisper ask me another question jojo what we're gonna have? Um, so you've obviously got your vermouth in yeah i um well obviously we all know what a martini is so yes yeah that your garnish is going to give this game away oh, you're so clever oh so you know you know i'm on it i'm on it like a cob on it you are indeed this is two silver skinned onions on a cocktail stick there they are oh, minging. and there it goes now i think i might have had some campari in there i don't think i washed it which is very naughty so i'm just <laughs> going to give this a go here we go cheers gross i hate onions and oh my god that's like it's just a glass of neat gin. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. So, no, let me tell you what it is. If anybody knows, it is actually called a Gibson. And the reason let's, it's called Gibson... Yeah, let me pop my specs on and see if anyone got it right. Did anyone get it right? So I'll tell you about a Gibson. So Gibson was named after Charles Donner Gibson, who was a famous artist uh, back in the day. And he drew pen and ink drawings. And I'll just need to this. He drew Gibson girls, okay? And the Gibson girls were his famous girls. Now, they had... Large assets, okay? <laughs> so the bartender at uh, his club, the Players Club in New York, he made yeah, a special that's martini. appropriate. Proper rocket fuel, I can tell you. But he said that these two silver-skinned onions, which is quite tricky to say at this point in the evening, these two silver-skinned onions represented the Gibson girls' assets. So there you go. There you go. Right, Ooh, we've got time. That for- sounds a bit like Marie Antoinette and her boobies for the champagne glass it, it does i have to say I, i've always been well blessed in that area and i think my boobies would fill more than one champagne glass but there you go so we've got time for a super Get quick you. game I know, I know. we've got time for a super quick game joe so you have to be quick on the mark with this one my darling are you ready well i was but i'm looking at which cocktail to have in my hand and i can't oh for goodness sake right oh, now the next game we're going to play is oh i love that one Oh, my Lord, I've just had a little burp. Oh, we're going to play Take Your Pick. Now, Take Your Pick was a bit like deal or no deal. So one person uh, yeah. one person has a box or a bag with something in it. They don't know what it is. And the, uh, the oh, look at you. And the host has to offer them things for this and to see whether they're going to take the bag or take the offer. So it could be in your bag. It might be like a toothbrush. It might be like... You know, a holiday to Australia. Not right now, obviously, after lockdown. So let's see. So, Jojo, are you ready? My first I'm ready. I'm ready. My first offer for you. It's not only it's not just a coaster, darling. This is a batch one coaster. This is Ooh. the first batch of coasters that York Gin ever made. This is a York Gin beautifully slate coaster with batch one written on it. How about that? I've got one. Oh, bum. Don't know. Bum. Okay. It might have something in it, but I'll drink it. I will offer you a York Gin copper glass. Oh, do you know what? I'm, I re- that's tempting. I really like those. They're really heavy, aren't they? Mm. They go in the dishwasher. I really like them. Um, I've got to. No. Oh, she's so rude. Okay, now, now. This is mine, but I promise I will give you a fresh in the packet York Gin apron. Tempting. Mm, no. no. My last and final offer is how about a tour of the York Gin Distillery? Do you know what? I know people love those and they ring up and they get one and they book them on the phone and they go online and they book one, but I work there, so not really, no. 
Well, I'd give up now. Open I'm going to do the Rizzillos and take the box. Take, take the money. Take the money. Take what's the in the box, box darling? Tell us what's in the box. box. Should we see what's in? Yes, please. <laughs> Look what we've got. We have got the brand new out. Yeah. Walked in complete tasting kit. Mm -hmm. These are going out. Mm hmm with all five minis and botanicals to go with everything. Nice. Tasting notes to make sure you get the most out of every gin. Always. And I think if you're really unlucky and you wanted to, there's videos of us telling you how to drink them as well. God knows why anyone would want to do that. Oh, but yes, <laughs> about to be, they're just about to be launched now, the York Gin Tasting Kit. So I've got one of those in my bag. Yay! So do you know what we're gonna do, Joe? We're gonna give that away to Joe. our surprise prize winner. Here we are. No, yeah, we are. For me. No, no, no. We're going to give that away. Oh, Joe, man, find out. Life. Have I got Joe. to look up who the... That's not fair. Yes, Have I got to look do. up who the what prize winner is? All right, you look that up. And if you can't find it, I'll go on to the quick bonus question. Quick bonus question. I found it. Oh, go on then. Tell us the answer. Well, it's not very fair, but it's Jenny Roper. Oh! Well done, Jenny. Well done, Jenny. You won the kick. Lovely. And of course, our bonus question is a very, it's always a big number. This is going to be quick because we are running over. So we're going to give you a very quick bonus. I, I know, don't know what she's doing. I've got loads. I have many parks. So bonus question. What was the 2019 revenue for Fever Tree? Ooh, one for the accountants. Uh, yeah. What was the 2019 revenue for Fever Tree? And we will give you a million either side. A million, big number. Okay. So good news is, Joe, have we got a discount code for tonight? Yes, we do. If you go onto York Gin website and order something, if you just add party to your code, you'll get 10% off. Uh, we deliver anywhere in the UK, of course. And if you live in York, if you're lucky enough to live in York, we'll do a little bit. It's no. free. Are you with us, Joe? I am with you. Party for 10% off. Party for 10% off. For free. Did we say hello to Glynis? I can't remember. Glynis, if we forgot to say hello to you. And it's no, Caroline Sinclair's no. birthday if she's with us. And maybe oh. Killed It James has joined oh, us. Tonight. Killed It. Look at well, us. Hello, darling, if you're there. Right. Okay. So I'm going to give you quickly give you the answer to the bonus question because I've got an absolute treat in store for you next week. So the bonus answer is, unbelievably, the revenue for Fever Tree is... Lots. Yes, lots. Yes. <laughs> Hundred and sixty point five million pounds. Who would believe it? Two hundred and sixty point five million pounds gets you a little slice yeah. of fever tree. I know. How much, now, how much should you say? How much? Two hundred and sixty point five million pounds. Do you know who would be pleased with that? The Colonel from Sweeps. He'd be pleased. Well, he would. That. Jill, bloody hell, Jill Warner was close. She's nearly what? got that right. Oh, what did she say? Because I can't see, obviously. So, like, yeah, Jill, oh, uh, where has she gone? 270. Oh, she was really close. That's, That's really, really close. Oh, Roshan Latham's got it right, nearly right as well. 250 million. Wow, that's amazing. That's really good. Now, next week, everyone, next week, you are in for a massive treat. Do not miss this one next week. Next week, we've got our Outlaw special. Now, look at that. Look at those reprobates. <laughs> now, right in the middle there is Mad Alice. Now, Mad Alice is our friend. She's my stage daughter. I love Mad Alice. She, I, <laughs> I often play her mother in productions. So, in Mad <laughs> Alice production, she won the winner of the best tour in York and the best experience in York. And of course, we won the best shop in York. Best shop and the best jeans in the world. So of course, we we doubled up. We've doubled up. So there is such a beast. Give it, believe it or believe it not. There is such a thing as the. Uh, York Gin Mad Alice Tour. What do they call it? The Bloody York Gin The Bloody tour. York Gin Tour. And I have to say, you were in America, unfortunately. Yeah, always. But yeah. I, was, I was on that and with yeah. Glynis. It was Glynis's birthday. So Glynis's yeah. birthday. I was there in cardboard cutout form. You were cardboard there in cardboard cutout form. I will, bring it, I will bring your cardboard cutout along to next week's show. Just so let people know what it looks like. That. Definitely bring that. So, of course, so next week is going to be, so Mad Alice is actually joining us and we're going to actually do a fantastic show with Alice. So all it leaves me to do is to say our oh, thank yous. Please join us next week because she is amazing. You yeah, are fantastic. So all the thank yous. So thank you to Sam Hurd, to Kirsty Hughes for the fabulous music this evening, to Emma, to Guy, to Bryony, to Will 
as always for my technicals this end to St. Leonard Hospice, please, if you can give to them, do give, donate. All left for me to say is good night, Joe. Love you. Bye, darling. See you soon. You. And good night, everyone. Sorry, we've run over by a few minutes. Love you all. We've got lots of cocktails. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Irving Berlin. Irving Berlin. But if you want to woo her and get a lot closer to her, say it with gin. <laughs>